Where do you stand with, and, and this, is, this is an issue in a lot of relationships, where do you stand, stand with opposite sex friendships? Is that healthy? <laughs> it, it, it's some people who come into the game like, yo, you ain't the first person I met. I, I yeah. got a lot of friends and they just happen to be female. Or yeah. conversely, women are like, I got a lot of friends and they're male. Slippery slope. My best friend is actually a woman. We've been best friends. She's also a clinical psychologist. She was in my wedding. Like we've been, me and Nisha have been best friends since the 10th grade, man. And I think there's a difference between a friend that's platonic. You know what I'm saying? It's obviously platonic. And let, 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 let's 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 be honest before you go there. It, it's, in some cases, it don't matter. Like like some people, just the thought of somebody else ringing your phone of the same of of the opposite of, sex yeah. presents problems. Yeah, I mean it, that goes back to that person's lived experience and their stuff and their baggage and what's motivating those behaviors from them. Where's their self confidence? Where's their sense of security? Where in your relationship do they feel reassured on the back end that it's just a friendship? Do you have a history of violating these type of friendships? Do you have a history of attention seeking behavior from the opposite sex that your partner can be concerned about? Like it's it's not that cut and dry. I think we do think like, oh, opposite sex it should be cool as platonic, but you know boundaries get moved all the time. Things happen all the time and your partner's comfort level is going to come down to like what they came in a relationship with or what happened in the course of y'all's relationship. Like you said, we always mess, not everybody messes up a good thing, but sometimes you get real damn close and you get close <laughs> enough so that your partner don't trust your ass as much doing those type of things. So I think it's a, it's a lot that goes on when it comes to opposite sex friendships. My personal thing is, I don't mind. My wife can be friends with whoever she wants. That's the relationship that she and I have. That's the trust that we kind of built up over the years. Um, she's the kind of woman where I feel like she doesn't need that, like that type of energy from her friendships. Like what's the motivation for the friendship? For her, I honestly believe it's just to be a friend. I could be wrong, I ain't stupid. You know, but that is the trust that I'm giving her in this relationship. If you don't have that trust, then that situation is impossible. You can't, you can't do that. You can't, uh, uh, you can't give somebody a check when they ain't got no money. Like, what, what you cutting it from? There ain't no money in the bank. So I think people need to take a good hard look at what their relationships look like holistically. Uh, but if everything's lined up, I think friends of the opposite sex are so powerful, man. I have two really good female friends. And bro, they just give me perspective that the homies cannot. You know, they've, right. they've been invaluable to my marriage, to my mental health, to my perspective on what goes on with women in the world, because I don't always understand what goes on with black women, because I don't always understand. And I need that shit broken down in this most simplest form by somebody who's not going to judge my ignorance and who knows me. Intimately. While we're on the topic of sex, and I know we were talking about sex in terms of male and female, let's talk about sex in its in its uh, rightful meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is an age old question. I'd like to get your, your thoughts on it. How long should a person wait? You out there, you're dating, you're looking for Mr. Right, or you're looking for Mrs. Right. How long should you wait before you engage in sexual activities? Uh, my, my, simple question, my simple answer is whenever you're comfortable. I don't, I always ask what's the motivation on holding off sex, specifically if it's an interaction that you desire to have with that other person, if you're waiting them out or if you're smoking them out or um, whatever. I always wonder what the motivation behind that is. But, uh, you know, it's whatever you're comfortable with. S sex is weird. Sex is weird because we don't really overtly talk about it with the people that we have it with. Like it's it's never like an in-depth conversation. Even when you're married, sometimes my wife and I realize early in our relationship, like, oh, we don't really we ain't talking about sex for real. We just make it happen and then it happens and it's done, you know? And then we started talking about it and the intimacy went through the roof, man. And I've never had a conversation like that. I'm 35, bro. I've never had that conversation before. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know the benefit of making someone wait. Um, I don't know. It could be circumstantial. It could be situational. I don't know. I, and my question is all, my answer is always going to be when you're comfortable. And my question is always going to be, well, what motivates this? What's the reason behind it? And then examine that and see if those efforts will actually lead to the outcome. 
Because if you're single and you're holding off sex, everyone knows there's eight other numbers in this phone. Like, you're holding off sex with you. <laughs> I'm still getting money over here. <laughs> so, uh, so um, yeah, yeah, it'll come down to that, that answer and that question for me, definitely. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.